Hello, Steve White, Steve Arts 89. Well, uh, I'm in Sydney for Mardi Gras and I've been too busy to watch Picard, but I actually finally managed to watch it today. I um, watched it in parts. Um, I watched the first part um, and then I got to the credits and then I had to wait another day and I watched it on my phone as well, so this wasn't the ideal viewing experience, so I'll try not to hold that against it. Now, this episode was kind of okay um, for the most part. I was kind of surprised. I wasn't enjoying it, but I was just sort of not bothered by anything um, until the end. But um, basically, Picard. Oh, sorry for the noise. I'm right over the highway, um, over the road. Um, basically, we see Picard um, talking about the cube to the crew, explaining stuff. Um, Elnor asks some innocent questions, and of course, Picard gets upset. And the rage did seem a little bit. Um, out of place because I felt he resolved all these issues in or around first contact so um, it did seem a bit um, forced or it just seemed a bit odd basically Picard said um, the Borg don't change they metastasize um, and apparently this, he was searching for um, the artifact a treaty and the Borg, and there seems to be some interesting political stuff happening there. Um, and when he was looking at the hell was that? <laughs> when he was looking at um, the Borg stuff, they the cutest came up, and they actually had uh, looking through a um, hollow sort of image of the cutest Picard's face. So it was kind of interesting, and then seeing him sort of seeing himself like that and remembering that. Um, maybe he just shut it out and didn't look at it all this time rather than dealing with it, but I'd like to think he would have, no, he would have dealt with it. This this isn't, the writing isn't good. It's, it's, he wouldn't be in this place at this age in his life. He still wouldn't be this traumatized by this event. He would have moved on long ago. Um, so it didn't really work in Star Trek. As a regular show, it was fine, but in Star Trek it didn't work. Um, uh, and then we go to, um, this very awkward romantic scene between the captain and um, Gerate, where she just, she's obviously upset because she just killed um, her ex-lover, um, and she's like, why do you like space? It's cold and empty and wants to kill you, and she's just all, I'm, I'm feeling hollow and helpless and lonely and afraid, and that's what someone was criticising the show. Everyone's damaged and um, unhappy and hollow and everything, and so they don't sleep together, they just kiss, and then, um, yeah, they just talk, and it was kind of weird and awkward and just seemed out of nowhere. It's like, well, we need another romance scene. Oh, let's get these two together. It just didn't, it didn't work either. No, and as Star Trek, I'm like, why am I watching this? I mean, one of the things I understood that Gene did and that he got into the next gen and got Rick Berman to do was, you have to look at the show and every scene and say, is this something, is this something I can only see on Star Trek? Is this something I can see somewhere else? Because if you can see it somewhere else, we don't do it. And that was the, one of the rules. And that's why Next Gen was so great, because you could only see Star Trek on Star Trek. You know, there was no other show like it. Whereas this, you could see scenes like this, characters like this, stories like this, you can see them anywhere on any show, in any gen generic sci-fi show. That's why it just is so unspecial. It's not bad, it's just not Star Trek. It's just unspecial. Um, so, um, we go to the cube and we see the brother and sister talking. Um, and she's annoyed by his fascination with this Rubik's Cube sort of thing that he keeps playing with. And he talks about Romulan philosophy. I guess it shows him a bit of an eye. It does try to explore the Romulans a little bit, which is kind of interesting, but not that interesting. Um, he's worked out that Soji has an unconscious and dreams and that he can probably get to the information they need without activating her um, by getting into her subconscious. Um, so they decided to do that because the, the sister was basically going to just override him and get rid of him saying, you're not, it's not working, you're infatuated with this girl and you're not doing anything, you're not finding anything out for us, just get rid of her. Um, I mean, we're just going to get rid of you, but then he convinces her to go with that. Um, now, of course, Picard might have to get into Romulan in space, so <sighs> Rafi, they drag her out of her cabin because she's obviously having a bender, which of course no 24th century human would be this sick. She would have been healed. There, there was no drug addiction in Star Trek's future, in Gene Roddenberry's vision of that future. So it's just, today, it's current, it just doesn't work and it's sad. She's vaping and drinking. She's got, literally got a jug in her mouth, basically. 
Um, and she calls up a friend and basically says, well, we're already in Romulan space. We're already creating an international incident. So how about you give us some clearance and let Picard into the cube as a diplomat and we won't get in trouble and we won't, um, you know, associate you with it as well. So she gets her, um, she gets Picard in and then the friend says, don't ever call me again. Um, and she goes off to her cabin. Um, so just having dreams, um, and he, like I said, he's trying to engage that, and um, Nurek, and he's trying to romance her, but he supposedly is falling in love with her as well. So we go through backwards and forwards across a lot of scenes, but I guess I've got to try and keep it together. Um, Raffi's in pain about her son, eventually she's in the cabin talking to the captain about all that, and it's some interesting character stuff, but um, not that great. Um, she does ask what do the Romulans or the Tel Shiad need with a synth, so that may go somewhere, but I'm not sure. Um, so she calls her mother, she can't stay awake, um, she pushes this, then she starts looking at all her stuff and she scans all her stuff and she owns nothing past three years old, so she's starting to realise that she isn't real. Um, Picard, Picard has to beam down alone, he does, he has a lot of trauma, he speaks to Hugh, he sort of... Hugh shows him that we're basically bringing these people back to life, we're humanising them, although it seems incredibly low-tech. They don't seem to be as humanised as um, Seven of Nine and Picard were. I'm like, why wouldn't they be using the kind of technology that Starfleet used on Picard and Seven of Nine to get them back much closer to human? Um, but Picard does see the Borg, who they really are, is their victims, not monsters. So he has that revelation, which I think he would have had about 20 years ago, um, but he has it in this episode, so it's kind of important for his journey in this series. Um, now, eventually they go to find Soji, they can't, uh, she's gone with, um, Nemec, or whatever his name is, um, to try and do some form of Romulan meditation, try and get to her, her memories and her dreams. And so he takes her into this little room, and she goes through, she walks through her dream, and eventually she looks up and sees the planets, the moons, and is seeing like the home of um, where where she was created or where the rest of the synths are. And from that description or image, I'm not sure if they were reading her images because the Romulan sister's watching the whole time. I'm not sure if she was somehow, I think she was just going by description. Basically they use that description to find the home planet or they're going to try and find the home planet. So then he walks out of the room, abandons her because you're done, you, you've served your purpose. Um, and we're just going to get rid of you. So he locks the door and he leaves the cube in the room and it opens up and a red uh, radiation gas comes out. But that activates her, she smashes through the floor, breaks through. Hugh and that couldn't find her because while she was in that area she was um, hidden. But they find her, um, she comes through the roof to them basically. Picard convinces her to come with them and it's really kind of strange. I, I felt really emotional when Picard was begging her to come with come with him and, and to trust him. Um, I really felt Picard's and Patrick Stewart's acting there, like he really made me feel his need to save her and his caring. Um, it was a bit emotional, I don't know why, it was just kind of very sudden. Um, but they run off, they go into what is the Borg Queen's cell in the ship, and this, the ship kind of doesn't really look like a Borg ship to me. And the Borg that we see looks a bit like Locutus, but it's not Locutus, it's not a flashback, it's not a reimagined Locutus or flashback, it's just another Borg that is still Borgified, because there's still Borg on the ship, they haven't all been reclaimed yet. So, um, they go in, because she has a spatial projector, which is how the Queen would escape from the Borg cube if there was a problem. She could transfer at least 40,000 light years. So they transfer, transfer 40,000 light years to a planet called Neptune, and this is the part that pissed me off. Um, they're leaving, and suddenly Elnor shows up, because he was told to stay on the ship, um, don't come, don't try and, you know, take care of me, basically, Picard sits down the ship. He showed up, he said, well, thanks for showing up, because he killed some guards and got them some time to escape. But he didn't leave with Picard, he could have just walked out, and Hugh could have just dealt with the Romulans. But instead, he goes with Hugh to shut down all the stuff they set up to um, get Picard out. And the door closes behind them, and he says to the guards, you know, I hope you choose to live. And that's the end of the episode. So apparently, I get, Maybe he won't die, maybe he escapes, they meet up with him later, but just the idea that he had to stay, he could have just stepped through it. It's little things like this just drive me nuts. They're just, just... Things just written for the sake of because, and then for reasons, that sort of 
thinking and it drove me a bit nuts. So that's the smallest thing. I felt the episode itself flowed fine, it didn't bother me so much. I didn't pay attention, sorry, to who wrote it or directed it. Um, because I, I stopped watching during the credits and I started after the credits and I forgot to actually do that. So I'm not sure if, if it was someone else and who did a better job or just someone, um, one of the other guys who wrote their episodes just having a better day. But it was okay until the end, but it's still not Star Trek. It's still not special. It's not, it doesn't fit in with the canon. It has the overarching issues of the Federation being um, Trump and Brexit, America and all this sort of, all these problems. But when you actually watch the episode itself, it's almost like an okay science fiction show, but it's still not Star Trek, it's not special. So I kind of have these moments of remembering that in amongst just sort of like, mm, yeah, no, it's okay. But um, I'm going to leave it there because um, I've got to <laughs> go to my gym to use the Wi-Fi to upload this and um, do the thumbnails and everything. And then I'm going to go to some regular clubs Universal, ARC, stuff like that, because I'm not going to any of the big parties tonight. I just couldn't be bothered. Don't want to go to the leather party. It's just too much. So I'm just going to go out, have some fun, and feel free to like, share, and comment, and let me know what you think. I think everyone has already talked about the show. I'm, I'm like days late. I don't know if anyone's going to care. Um, I'm going to have to go and watch everyone else's videos, which I haven't gotten to do, because I left my Wi-Fi at home. So I wasn't, and I couldn't find any Wi-Fi in my area that was like working or manageable or not having to buy a new plan or something ridiculous. So I haven't been able to just sit down and watch my YouTube like normal and watch any streaming. So I've just been very bored. Um, but I've been out most of the time, but yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and feel free to comment. I wanna know what other people think. Um, am I being too harsh on the show? I guess is what I'm trying to work out. Thanks, bye.